Hi, I'm Laura Arseniega, Director of Family Ministries and Discipleship at Shepherd of the Hills United Methodist Church, Mission Viejo Campus. In light of the coronavirus pandemic, we are producing short Bible lessons for kids that you can watch online here in place of meeting together for Sunday school. Now, I miss all of you and I wish we could be together at church, but I'm also excited to share some things with you today. So if you have your Lenten calendar at home, you can look and see that we are on the third Sunday of Lent. Here it says, stop making my father's house a marketplace. And at the bottom it says John 2, 16. And it shows a picture of a bird being freed from a cage. So read that in the Bible and learn more about this story. Now Lent is a special time where we think extra about Jesus and about all of the things that he did for us. And sometimes we do some extra things um, called Lenten disciplines to help us grow closer to him. So the Lenten calendar is one of those things that we can do with a daily activity and Bible verse um, or art project. So uh, I also want to review our Bible verse that we have been practicing um, over Lent, John eleven twenty five, 25. Um, and there's a motion that goes with it. The sign for this, uh, the word resurrection is you put your hand like this and then your other hand on top, resurrection. And you can see how that is like Jesus rising, rising from the dead. So John eleven twenty five, 25, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live. Uh, and so it's a beautiful verse that is important for us to remember as Jesus' disciples today because Jesus spoke it to one of his disciples long ago when they were extremely sad about something. So uh, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live. Uh, so now I'll pray and then we'll do the Bible story. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are with us always. Even when we can't be together with each other, um, you unite us. I thank you for your love and mercy. Amen. So our Bible story today is from John 4, 5 through 30, and then verses 39 through 42. So two big chunks of that chapter. <clears throat> so Jesus came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. Uh, the Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jewish man, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jewish people do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. The water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to this well to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, You are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you have had five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. But a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father is looking for. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that the Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. But then Jesus declared, I, who am speaking to you, am he. Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what are you talking to her for? Then... Leaving her water jar, the woman went back into the town and told all the people, Come, talk to this man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? 
So all the people came out of the town and made their way toward Jesus. Now, skipping down to verse 39. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in Jesus because of what the woman said. She said, he told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard it for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. So in this Bible story, um, Jesus broke a lot of social rules when he talked with the Samaritan woman. He did things that people of his time and culture thought was unacceptable. First, he spoke with a woman, and second, he spoke with the Samaritan. The Jewish people and the Samaritan people did not interact with each other. They had a lot of religious conflicts. Another thing I want to point out to you is that we don't know everything about the Samaritan woman's life. We don't know why she had five husbands, and we don't know why the man she was living with was not her husband. Um, and we should know that uh, women in that time and place could not divorce their husbands. A divorce could only happen if the husband asked for it. So it's possible that her husbands had um, divorced her or had died or abandoned her. So there were many reasons why the Samaritan woman maybe seemed like the wrong person for Jesus to be talking to, but he often talked with the, the wrong kind of people, people who the religious leaders didn't like. We should remember that everyone, even the wrong kind of people, belong to God. He loves them just like he loves us. And in this story, the Samaritan woman is kind of the hero. She is the one who tells the people all about Jesus and brings them out to meet him. And so it's important to remember um, how Jesus turns things upside down. So this week, I want you to be thinking about how is Jesus turning your life upside down, but in a good way. So is he helping you reach out to people that you wouldn't ordinarily talk with? Now, since we are all sort of stuck in our homes, this would happen on social media or on the phone, um, through texting. But if you can think of ways, pray about ways, um, and then act on those ideas that you have about ways to reach out to those who maybe feel unloved or not accepted by people, that's one way to show the love of Jesus and to act as Jesus did. Uh, so... I will pray for us, and then we will close with our usual closing blessing that we always do in Sunday school. Uh, Lord, I thank you that you spoke with the Samaritan woman long ago, and that you still reach out to people today who are left out, and who are maybe different or not accepted. Help us not to be like uh, the religious leaders who often don't accept people like that. Help us always to be reaching out to people with your love and showing them um, how good you are, how much you love them, we thank you for your presence with us, and we pray in your name. Uh, so we're going to do the motions for the closing blessing, and it'll be fun even though we're not together in the same room. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen.